Summer travel expectations remain high. The U.S. Travel Association says over a quarter of Americans plan to increase spending on leisure travel in the next three months. But will economic pressures ultimately weigh on demand? Our own Sarah Eisen joins us with a very special guest to talk about that in a CNBC exclusive. Morning, Sarah. Good morning, Carl. Yes, I am here at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square, where there's been a huge hospitality conference, the NYU Hospitality Conference, with my guest, Chris Nassetta. He is the CEO of Hilton. Great we were just to be on with the you, panel. Sarah. Yeah, it's good to have you. Carl was just talking about the, the strong demand that we're seeing for summer travel bookings. Any sign of a slowdown, given some of the economic pressures we're looking at? Not so far. I mean, you'd be, you know, I know with everything going on in the world, everybody wants to will the business to, to be weaker. But the reality is our three big segments, which are leisure, business transient, and meetings and events, are all very strong. I think we'll have the strongest summer season in our history, which will only, you know, surpass the last uh, strongest summer, which was last summer, and then business transient demand continues to really pick up steam. It's led by small, medium size enterprises. Uh, they continue to be well over prior peaks. Uh, big businesses keep grinding up at a little bit, a little bit slower pace. And then we're here with 3,000 people at the New York Marriott Marquis. Um, you know, the, the meetings and events business, literally the demand is off the hook. So many people didn't do meetings and events to, for you know basically three years they're now making up for lost time and they have to do these meetings and events that have taken place uh, for time and eternity so the out you know the out years both the end of this year and into into uh, 24 25 in meetings and events looks really good inbound international is started you know starting to pick up we're not nearly back to where we were sure. um, but that's starting to happen and so I think there are a bunch of Tailwinds in the in the industry in terms of pent up demand, international travel, shifting in spending patterns to experiences and away from things that you're seeing happen, all right. uh, against a headwind, which is uh, you know clearly somewhat um, slower growth. What about business demand? You you mentioned that it looks strong, and we have seen businesses, certainly technology, banking, where productivity is in, cost cuts are in. So do you expect to see the same level of demand for business travel that we've been seeing in recent months? What's interesting, I had, a, <clears throat> I had an event with 300 of our biggest customers here in New York about a month ago. And we were talking to, you know, all those things, tech, tech folks, consulting, uh, financial services. And generally, even with the layoffs, everything going on, their needs are increasing, not decreasing. Which sounds odd, but the fact of the matter is they're they're not anywhere near back to the levels of travel that they had pre-COVID. So while they're maybe not growing as fast as they were, they're still growing. And the real story is what I, you know, what I commented before, SME, small, medium small enterprise, uh, size enterprises, they're still traveling more than they ever have. And when you talk to that customer, yeah. particularly in an environment where they're worried about things slowing, they have more needs to travel to keep their business moving forward. So is business back to 2019 levels yet? Business overall is back. Business or travel. Is, business travel is a little bit above on a revenue basis 2019. And Driven you, by SME and not back uh, on the basis of the big corporates. So international is not back, as you mentioned. International is a far cry from where it was. Is it because of China? Because China's opening up now. Well, it's a bunch of different things. China is opening up, but there are not many Chinese people leaving China. I was in China last week, had a terrific trip, was mostly in Shanghai. And, you, you know, China is open. They're past COVID. You know, people are, there's a, a huge hustle and bustle. But not many Chinese travelers at this point yet are leaving China. Why? And not that many people are going in. There aren't a lot of flights to get out. They haven't issued, reissued passports for outbound Chinese travelers. And the visa wait times to get into the United States from some of our biggest markets like China, India, Brazil, Mexico, and others are still very, very long. They're still in many cases into the hundreds of days. I'm the chairman of U.S. Travel, yeah. you know, my nighttime job. Yeah. Uh, so you're lobbying to, and to so we've been working, speed that up. We've been working with the administration, which we've done with many administrations to sort of speed up processing of visas to get to a goal of 21 days, which we did during the Obama years, and we think we can do it again. And the administration's been terrific 
it's starting with State Department really on the lead to address those issues. So I think part of it is flight capacity um, and getting more flights, particularly as a result uh, relates to China. And then it's getting more uh, folks in the consulates around the world and processing times um, in visas down. So I think, you know, international inbound travel to the U.S. is probably 60 percent of what it was by our numbers pre-COVID. So there is a huge tailwind of opportunity there. And China being in particular is probably 10 percent of what it was in 19. China's the number one outbound market in the world. China had 200 million outbound passengers. But you just expect that to come back? And because we, everyone was so bullish on China, and some of the economic data has been pretty, pretty disappointing. I think it's just going to take some time, but I would fully expect Chinese travelers want to travel the world, and I think the Chinese government is going to want to encourage that. I think this is just me talking. I think it's in part they got to get the Chinese economy going again right. after zero COVID, and so keeping... Uh, their folks a little closer to home allows them to, to ramp up the economy faster. But clearly, over the next yeah. six or 12 months, I think that changes.